Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of The Six Sexy. If you are new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button down below and like this video for more content. Now, in today's video, we are going to dive back into sex and disability. Now, I did a video on sex and disability uh, about two to three years ago, I think two years ago, um, and I wanted to do an updated one. So just a warning, if you are sensitive to the topic of sex or um, underage, then you feel free to click out of this video now. Uh, but for those of you who are interested in my take on sex and disability, please keep watching. A couple of years ago, I actually did a video on sex and disability where I talked about my experience with it and what things you can do to feel more comfortable in the bedroom and more um, sexy and intimate with your partner if you do have pain. And I really just wanted to touch on that again because it's been a little while now. I feel that I've matured a little bit more and I have more insight to offer. Uh, but we're going to start with an article I wrote in 2018, What No One Tells You About Disability and Sex. So I'm just going to start off with the little prologue. It's Valentine's Day. I pull a pair of silky black suspenders over my hips and admire myself in the reflection. I tussle my hair over one shoulder, eyes wide with anticipation. It's happening. His lips are on my neck, a moan escapes my mouth as he slowly drags my panties down my legs and asks me to lift my hip over his. But then, there it is, a creaking noise like a door hinge that needs oiling, and I try to conceal my embarrassment, but it's too late. He sees the anguish across my face. What was that, he asks. Nothing, just my hip making noises, I say quickly. Don't stop, keep going. But it's too late, the moment's passed. Now, I wanted to give you like a little bit of insight into how I was feeling at that time. Sex and disability do not go together. They're not a paired relationship. And when you talk about disabled people having sex, it is a bit of a taboo. And I want to break that. Here on The Six Sexy, where else would you go for destigmatizing important topics? The reality of the situation is, is that people with a disability enjoy sex just as much as the average person. Yes, of course, pain relief and other medications can affect your libido, but that is not to say that we're not sexual people. Uh, it can be obviously tough, but not impossible. So here we go. I have been in a long-term relationship for six years now, so it's not like I'm going out you know, to the bar or the club, not that anyone, and not that any of us are going out to the bar or the club, but because I'm quite a monogamous person anyway, I was never really a one night stand hookup kind of person. If that's what you're into, that's fine. There's no judgment here at all. Um, but why I'm bringing this up is because I never had to have that awkward conversation with anyone. Uh, but it's definitely conversations that I had to have with my partner. And so really, let's look at how you can tackle that. I mean, I guess the first most important point is honesty is key. Uh, if I'm in a lot of pain or I'm just not in the mood, I will be honest about that and upfront. And most of the time, you know, disability can obviously affect your libido and affect your mood and how you feel. But obviously in that moment, sex obviously re releases a lot of endorphins and a lot of adrenaline. So there is a part of you that kind of learns to desensitize if you're someone with chronic pain. Now I have a broken hip and <laughs> any kind of exercise is painful for me. That is just my normal, going for a walk on the beach, going to the gym, going to work, sitting down, even just sitting here talking to you right now, I'm in 24 seven pain. So sex is no different really. Um, I experience that while I'm experiencing that intimate moment. Uh, but at the end of the day, because I've lived with pain for so many years, I do learn to compartmentalize how I feel about that. So even though the pain is there, I'm somewhere else mentally, if that makes sense. And I think it comes back to being in the moment. So one of the ways that I am able to kind of shut off from that pain when I'm being intimate with my partner is to basically be fully present and Yes, there have been moments where I've been caught and gotten like a really bad cramp or like I've, you can hear visibly hear my hip cracking and that, I mean, it turns me off more than it turns my partner off. Um, 
basically because it doesn't sound great, like it, it sounds like crunching bones, which is essentially, I mean, that's what's going on inside my hip. I've got two bones that are rubbing together. So obviously if you're in a, any particular position or you're, you're exercising a lot, um, obviously you'll hear that and that can sometimes deter people. But I think if you are someone that has a disability that's perhaps invisible, the best thing to do is to be upfront with the person that you intend on being intimate with. It doesn't have to be something um, that's going to take away from the moment. You might even want to have that conversation outside of the bedroom. In fact, I would probably recommend that you do have that conversation outside of the bedroom and just let that person know because there's nothing worse than um, being in a moment with someone and being intimate with them and then something happens and you either have to conceal how you're feeling or tell them to stop or, um, you know, like you're in too much pain and you can't enjoy yourself. So definitely be upfront and honest with uh, your partner or the person you're seeing or whoever. I'd say if it was like a casual hookup, I would probably say if you intend on being intimate with that person and you know that certain positions are going to hurt more than others, then take charge in that situation. You might not necessarily feel comfortable to tell them that you have a medical condition or a disability, but at least take the reins with position. So if you know that sitting on top is going to make things harder, um, go missionary or vice versa. If you know that certain positions are going to cause you more hardship, then make sure that you avoid them. And you don't have to tell them everything. You can say, oh, you know, I prefer to do it this way or this, that and the other. And at the end of the day, if you're not comfortable or if that person is hurting you, that's when I would obviously tell them to stop and just be honest and, and be upfront with them. Honest, honesty is always the best because I find that if you lie to a person, they're going to feel awkward anyway in that moment. So the best thing you can do for yourself and the other person is to tell them the truth. My next tip for getting tackling disability and sex is to make yourself feel attractive. Now there's this huge misnomer that disabled people are not attractive. And here on The Six Sexy, I try very much and very strongly to um, continue to reiterate the fact that just because you have a disability or an invisible illness or a medical condition does not mean that you are not a human being and that you are not first and foremost a man or a woman and that you can't feel sensual and attractive and sexy in your body. I think that's super, super important. I feel like sometimes when you get a diagnosis for a condition, it becomes your identity. And while that's not necessarily a bad thing because if it makes you feel empowered to talk about your condition or your illness, that's fantastic, but don't let it eradicate your sexuality. Make sure that you're still doing things to make yourself feel good. It comes back to self-care as well. So, you know, if you're getting ready for an intimate night in, put your favourite perfume on. Wear your favourite lingerie. Uh, make sure that you, you know, feel good. You've had a shower, you've gotten, a, you know, you've lit the candles and you've made the bed really nicely. Put yourself in the right frame of mind so that when you are in that situation, it's intentional and you're not worrying about how you look or your pain or what the other person thinks of your body. You're just concerned with how beautiful you feel because you've intentionally made yourself feel that way. And obviously, if you are in a loving relationship, your partner isn't going to care that you have a long-term disability. And I don't mean that in a harsh way. Obviously, they'll care about you as a person and care if you're in pain. But when it comes to sex, that person loves you for who you are and finds you attractive and doesn't even think about that in the moment. Honestly, all they're thinking about is that one thing. So yeah, definitely set the mood and try and do a little bit of self-care beforehand. Now, when it comes to pain relief and sex, that is obviously a very personal choice. I'm not a trained health professional, so I won't sit here and give you advice on what medication to take. Obviously, have that discussion with your doctor. If you're finding that your libido is lacking because of the medication you're on, there's many specialists that you can speak to about that. I'd start with your GP and just mention that it's become a problem or if you're having any kind of like issues with it. Um, but other than that, look, try and make yourself as comfortable as possible. Um, I don't generally take a lot of medication before bed anyway, whether that's just sleeping or whatever. I used to, I try not to anymore. Um, but if I know that, you know, I'm going to be intimate or even just exercising, I'll make sure I have some Panadol because that kind of dulls the surface of the pain so I can at least enjoy myself. 
And yeah, I guess if you are someone that suffers with long-term chronic pain, you'll know that you can't, there's only so many um, physical things you can do within a day. So it might not be realistic to say, uh, you know, you went to the gym and then you went to work and then you're going to have hanky-panky that night. So try and, I know it sounds unsexy and it sounds a little bit methodical, but make sure that you plan out your night so that you know that by the end of the day, you're not going to be too exhausted for sex. And that's not to say it takes the fun out of it. It just ensures that, you know, you've got a certain amount of spoons to work with and you're aware that you don't want anything to get in the way. So I hope this video helps some of you. Um, obviously, it is an awkward conversation to have with anyone and it's definitely a subject that's been very hush-hush and taboo. But if we don't talk about these things and we don't ask the right questions, we're constantly going to be living in a way that's not true to ourselves and I want you guys to be able to have the most powerful loving sexual relationships that you can have openly and honestly and not feel like your disability or invisible illness is a barrier to that so I hope you enjoyed this video if you like more content like this please let me know in the comments down below and until next time guys I'll see you later you can call me stupid yes you can call me sheep Say I'm